Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you no longer when your state of honor. I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely one's advice, be not found here, hence with your little ones. To fright you thus, methinks, I am too savage. To do worse to you were felt cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you, I dare abide no longer. I did not take my leave of him, but had most pretty things to say. Ere I could tell him, I would think on him at certain hours. Such thoughts and such, or I could make him swear. The she's of Italy should not betray. Mine interest and his honor or have charged him at the sixth hour of morn, at noon, at midnight. To encounter me with orisons for then, I am in heaven for him. Or ere I could give him that parting kiss which I had said. But twixt two charming words comes in my father, and like the Trinanus breathing of the north, shakes all our buds from growing. Consider, lords, he is the next of blood, an heir apparent to the English crown. Had Henry gotten empire by his marriage and all the wealthy kingdoms of the west, there is reason he should be displeased at it. Look to it, lords. Let not his smoothing words bewitch your hearts. Be wise and circumspect. What though the common people favor him, calling him Humphrey, the good Duke of Gloucester, clapping their hands and crying with loud voice, Jesu, maintain your royal excellence. With God preserve the good Duke Humphrey. I fear me, lords, for all this flattering gloss, he will be found a dangerous protector. Open your ears, for which of you will stop the vent of hue when loud rumor speaks? I, from the Orient to the drooping West, making the wind my post or still and follow the axe commence on this part of earth. Upon my tongue's continual slanders ride, the which in every language I pronounce, stuffing the ears of men with false reports. I speak of peace, what of our enmity, under the smile of safety rules the world. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known, though in your state of honor, I am perfect. I doubt some dangers will approach you nearly. If you will take a homely one's advice, be not found here. Hence, with your little ones, to fright you thus, methinks. I am too savage to do worse to you or fall cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. I would not be thy executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou tellst me there is murder in mine eye. Tis pretty sure and very probable that eyes are the softest and frailest things who shut their cowed gates on atomies. Should be called tridents, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on thee with all my heart. And if my eyes can wound, let them kill thee. Now counterfeit to swoon. Why now fall down? Oh, if thou cannot, Oh, for shame, for shame, lie not to say mine eyes are murderers. I did not take my leave of him, but I had most pretty things to say. Or ere I could tell him I would think on him at certain hours, such thoughts to such, or I could make him swear. The she's of Italy should not betray. My interest and his honor, or if charged him, at the sixth hour of morning, at noon, at midnight, to encounter me with Orson, for then I am in heaven for him, or ere I could give him that parting kiss which I had said. Betwixt two charming words comes in my father, and like a Chinanus breathing of the north, shakes all our buds from growing. Let me 
look back upon thee. O thou wall that girdles in those walls, die with the earth. And thence, not Athens, matrons turn the continent, obedience, fail in children. Slaves and fools pluck the grave wrinkles sinate from the bench. The minister in their steeds to general filth convert other ace of green virginity. Do it in your parents' eyes. Bankrupts hold fast rather than render back out with your knives and cut your trusters' throats. Bound servants? Steal. Large hand of robbers your great masters are, and peel my law. Maids to thy master's bed. Thy mistress is other brothel. Summer sixteen, pluck thy clutch from thy old Olympic side, and with it beat out his brains. Piety and fear. Religion to gods. Peace, justice, truth, domestic awe, night rest and neighbourhood, instructions, manners, mysteries and trades, degrees, observances, customs and laws, decline to your confounding countries, and yet confusion live, plagues innocent to men, your patrol and infectious favours. Keep on Athens, ripe for stroke. Alack, why am I set forth to a king before I have shook off the regal thoughts wherewith I reigned? I hardly yet have learned to insinuate, flatter, bow, and bend my limbs. Give sorrow leave a while to tutor me to this submission. Yet I well remember the favours of these men. Were they not mine? Did they not sometimes cry, all hail, to me? So, Judas did to Christ, but he in twelve found truth in all. But one, I in twelve thousand, none. God save the king. Will no man say amen? Am I both priest and clerk? Well then, amen. Open your ears, for which of you will stop the vent of hearing when loud rumor speaks? I from the Orient to the duping West, making the wind my post horse, still unfold the acts commenced on this ball of earth. Upon my tongues, continual slanders ride, the which in every language I pronounce, stopping the ears of men with false reports, I speak of peace. Covered enmity under the smile of safety wounds the world. I would not be thy executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou tellst me there's murder in mine eyes. Tis pretty, sure, and very probable. The eyes that are the frailest and softest of things, who shut their coward gates upon atomies should be called tyrants, butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on thee with all my heart, and if mine eyes can wound, now let them kill thee. Now counterfeit swoon, why now fall down? Or if thou canst not, oh for shame, for shame, lie not to say mine eyes are murderers. Thus pour the stars down plagues for perjury. Can any face of brass hold longer out? Here stand I, lady. Dart thy skill at me. Bruise me with scorn, confound me with a flout. Thrust thy sharp wit quite through my ignorance. Cut me to pieces with thy keen conceit, and I will wish thee never more to dance. No, never more in Russian habit, wait, oh, never will I trust the speeches penned, nor never come in bizarre to my friend, nor woe in rhyme like a blind harper's song. 
The fat of phrase is silken terms, precise, three piled hyperbole, spruce affection, figures pedantical, these summer flies had blown me full of mega ostentation. <sighs> I do forswear, and I hear protests by this white glove. How white the hand, God only knows, henceforth my wooing mind shall be expressed. In russet yeas, an honest curse he knows, and to begin whence, so God help me law. My love to thee is sound, sans crack or flaw.